what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest project Elixir on version 3.7 this is the latest update based on Android 13 and of course the build date here is 30th April 2023 I have been using this ROM for a couple of days now and daily driving on this ROM has been one of the best experiences that I have ever had. I'll list the flashing guide and stuff in the description so if you want to flash this ROM you can check them out beforehand and let me show you the about section. On top we get the project Elixir logo, officially supported device it shows over here, Android version as 13. The security patch here is of April 5th 2023, not quite May yet because this build is of April and we have the Elixir version showing as 3.7. The stock kernel here is the 4.14 Aghinsa kernel and we have the SNX series showing as enforcing. You can see the build it again from right here. Let me show you the system settings. We have the thermal profiles right here. The Elixir updater is present as well. You can check for updates. This updater really looks beautiful and you can hop into some kind of about and stuff from here and we have the thermal profiles again. We have the default benchmark browser camera and we have the dialer gaming streaming all these other features for the apps and we have the developer options because I have enabled that separately and in the gesture settings we have the swipe rig screenshot that is actually working perfectly fine we get to see the share edit delete and the capture mode and stuff appears in the apps where there is a lot of scrolling space we have the quickly open camera in the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we have the full screen gestures this will actually hide the pill part also the pill length customization is present but with the longest settings this is how it looks like we have the swipe to invoke as it is and stuff that is actually working perfectly fine, no issues. We have the left edge, right edge customization. Let me go back to button and three button navigation is there as well and we have the invert layout for those. Let me go back the one handed mode is also there and that should be working perfectly fine. And we have the press and hold power button action and by default it is set to digital assistant. You make sure you set it to power menu if you need that. Here we have the double tap to check phone and the adaptive playback and stuff. Let me go back we have the live translate as well if you want to use that talking about the stock launcher this is the launcher 3 present by default here and this is a really good experience with the stock launcher i would say and let me show you the settings of it we have the misc on the bottom we have the background blur depth the taskbar option and we have the allow home screen rotation and the restart option in the shizans you can disable them no issues with that the recent panel you can actually customize and you can enable the screenshot memory info lens clear all and shake phone to clear all task is also present right here and in the app drawer we have the themed icons app search bar icon labels in drawer also we have the row height and the background opacity for that in the home screen settings you will find multiple things like the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and stuff all those good features wallpaper scrolling and zooming swipe to access google app that's the google's discover page and we have the status bar drop shadow icon labels on desktop hot seat background and we also have the google search bar music search themed icons etc you can enable and in the icons section we have the icon pack notification dots and the icon size font size etc customization here in the recent panel with everything turned on this is how it looks like it definitely looks beautiful to me at least it has the like glow kind of experience i would say if you're noticing on the recent apps and on the corners right here and we have the screenshot the google lens the clear all button also on the bottom you can see the ram usage status currently and if you want to go into the split top mode or if you want to go into the freeform mode all these options are present and let me show you the new feature yes if you shake this all the apps will be cleared from memory really beautiful these are the stock apps present by default here the fresh walls the pixart all these kind of apps are there because i was restoring my google app data backup but except for those all are the stock apps of course swiping up on the home screen will get to the app drawer you can search for any particular app that is working perfectly fine swiping down will get you to the notification and the quick setting panel and the quick setting panel stays white just like this in the light theme and if you turn on dark mode of course it will turn pitch black and stuff all those good things to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page working perfectly fine and the whole ui is running at 120 hertz without any issues going into the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers this is the default wallpaper that you get on this particular rom but the wallpaper that i have been using is from the wallp app and if you want to change the wallpaper colors or basic colors you can definitely do that up to 16 colors for each of them the dark theme the themed icons and the app grid is there up to 6 by 10 also the system icon packs you can change from right here but they are also in the customization settings which i'll show you later on we have the system fonts as well you can change between multiple fonts options 
as you are noticing. I'll show you the fingerprints kind of speed, customization, etc. later on. But first, let me talk about the stock camera. Well, you are getting the MIUI camera right out of the box. And this one has the lens switching option and stuff. The 0.6x lens is actually working fine. The 1x, 2x, every option is working great. Also, if you switch to the front camera, let me show you the portrait mode pictures are actually working perfectly fine. No problems whatsoever with this particular camera. I have tested almost everything, even the 64 megapixel mode and stuff, everything is working. And in the video settings, you will get up to 4K 30p shooting option. No issues whatsoever with that. And we have the super macro lens working fine as well. Let me show you this. So yeah, I hope you can see this. The super macro lens is actually working perfectly fine. Also, you can shoot pro mode videos by controlling the white balance, focus, shutter speed, etc. up to 4K 30fps. So this is great. The stock camera over here, I definitely am liking it because this is a really stable camera and the MIUI camera is always best optimized for the Redmi Note 10 Pro and I definitely like that. You will get Google Dialer over here as the stock dialer and it does have the call recording option and stuff if you need that. But weirdly enough, I could not simply enable a Vaulty icon over here and I do not have a Vaulty icon as you are noticing. But yeah, Vaulty works perfectly fine here. Let's talk about the quick setting panel toggles. If you just click on edit, you can edit and add multiple toggles. But let me show you which ones I have added. The Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, the flashlight, everything is there. The auto rotate battery saver, Google Home controls, night light and the screen recorder is also there. And there is the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time with this. Nearby share, data saver, always on display, dark theme, anti flicker, or the streaming mode is also there. You can enable it if you want. And we have the do not disturb, the live display, airplane mode, and the one handed mode. These are the toggles that I have added. Also, the brightness slider position you can change from the customization settings. And in the power menu, you can go into the advanced settings and directly reboot to the recovery and stuff if you want that. Let's talk about the basic things. Yes, the safety net passes right out of the box on this ROM, so you can use banking apps without any issues. The DRM info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Also, the IR Blaster, if you're noticing that light, that means it's working fine. This ROM does offer Google Photos unlimited backup like a Pixel device, so you can definitely use it. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, adaptive brightness, the extra dim feature. In the lock screen, we have the allow face unlock when swiping up. Skip lock screen to show device controls, control from lock device. Always show time info is the always on display. The screen timeout up to 30 minutes and there is the screen attention as well. Then we have the dark theme, you can enable it and schedule it if you want. Then we have the display size and text and you can definitely customize it. And we have the full screen apps as well. So you can force particular apps to full screen in case you need that. We have the night light, you can again schedule it and change the intensity. The colors you can change to boosted, saturated, adaptive, natural, etc. I have been using it with saturated and you can also change the RGB control, you can say. Let me go back, we have the allow window level blurs and this is a blur I think which is there. And we have the auto rotated screen, the smooth display, that is the 120 hertz. We also have the screen saver stuff and we have the double tap wick as well. In the essence, you will find the customizations. Now, let me show you this. In the theme section, we can see there is the card style and there is the default style. And I have been using it with the card style of the UI and we have the use custom theme. I have been using it with the vivid, but you can use it with the black, espresso, paint in the snow, etc. options. Also, there is the headline and body fonts. Plethora of fonts are here, including the LG Smart Gothic and the nothing dot font and stuff. Then we have the OnePlus Slate. Also, there is the Samsung one, etc. options. So you can use any font that you are liking. And we have the icon packs. You can change it to rounded, Kai, Oxygen OS, etc. options. Then we also have the signal icon styles and plethora of options for the signal icon styles. If you are noticing, let me go to the Wi-Fi icon styles. And these are the options you will get for the Wi-Fi icons. In the lock screen, we have the double tap to sleep, ripple effect and the edge lighting option as well. Then we have the media cover art. Then we have the screen of animation and stuff. You can change it to CRD or scale if you want. Lock screen charging info, the fingerprint authentication and error vibration. Both are there. In the status bar, we have the double tap to sleep. The quick pull down is there. If you want to enable that, you can. The reticker option is there. The 4G icon show Wi-Fi type. Then the small mobile data type icon and the roaming indicator show data disabled icon. Well, if I enable this, this actually looks a little weird to me. If you're noticing, that's why I have disabled this. So in the signal icon, just notice this looks a little weird with this show data disabled icon and I just disabled the option because of that. In the icon manager, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons. 
but there should have been the volte icon in case someone needs it but yeah this one does not have that let me go back we have the traffic indicator the battery style you can change it between plethora of options just notice how many battery icon styles are there i have been using it with the icon landscape right but you can go for other options as well that you are seeing and we also have the battery percentage position you can change it to next to the icon or inside the icon in the quick settings we have the change layout option and you can of course go with the outline then the outline style and stuff so look at this this is the outline style but this is how it looks right now not really sure why but yeah normal outline is working perfectly fine if you're noticing and there is a brightness slider style as well you can also change it to outline style in case you need that this is how it will look with that so you can definitely tweak the brightness slider and the quick setting panel styles if you really want but i'll stick with this one it looks cool and we have the quick setting header image as well if you just enable this one just notice you will get a header image but in the light theme i am not really liking it because it makes the quick setting panel a little bit dark so that's why i did not like it that much but yeah, if you want a picture or something you can definitely customize it between the like values and stuff and you will see different pictures on top of the quick setting panel definitely looks cool enough i would say if you want to use this you definitely can there is a brightness slider and you can change the option to show always and even the position you can change to bottom with that you can always see the brightness slider on the bottom and we have the auto brightness icon the data usage four stop button and we have the required unlocking to use the sensitive tiles then we also have the gestures in here we have the system kind of gestures i'm not going to show it again let me go back we have the misc settings in here we have the enable advanced restart long press power button toggle torch ignore window secure flags in call vibration options are also there then we have the hide icon of options and we have the game space of course you can add any game that you want let me show you the battery settings this is how it looks like the animation and stuff in the battery settings really looks cool we have this green kind of bar we have the battery manager the battery percentage option is there as well pad app battery optimization is here and you can enable or disable some app if you want now if you scroll down to the bottom you will see different options like the battery temperature current battery capacity design battery capacity also the charging cycle shows up and if in case you want to see my in depth battery details you definitely can from here i have gone through about 286 charging cycles but let me show you the battery life i have tested with the aku battery app well this data is totally estimated but yeah i would say the battery life that i have been getting is amazing i have been getting about seven plus hours of screen on time even the screen off or the standby time you can see it's about three days and the combined use is showing as about 13 hours 44 minutes so almost 14 hours you can say and in the health section i can say my battery has degraded quite a bit and right now it is at 75 percent battery health and this is depending on two sessions so if you have a newer battery or newer device you will get much better battery life on this rom and the fast charging and stuff is working perfectly fine you should not need to worry about that in the sound and vibration settings we have the media call ring etc volume controls and we have normal media settings then we have the adaptive sound and stuff you can enable it if you want live caption you can also enable it from here then we have the vibration and haptics and you can enable the touch feedback if you want let me scroll down we have the default notification sound then the normal ringtone and other changing options and we have the dial pad tone screen looking sound charging sound and vibration touch sound always show icon when in vibrate mode option is here and there is the power app volume control as well you can enable it if you want we have the me sound enhancer as well and from here you can choose between these youth edition standard edition and all these other headphone presets you can see from right here and with the youth edition the sound quality with the headphone jack has been amazing for me and even with blue headsets and stuff it's amazing and we have the preset changing option then the smart scene option is also there there is a clear speaker option as well and we have the haptic feedback and the intensity you can customize from right here this is how the volume panel looks like and you can actually expand the volume panel just like this and you can put the phone into mute or silent from here and you can expand the volume panel to actually change the output device from right here and let me show you how it looks like in the lock screen so yeah this is how it looks the background media art definitely looks beautiful and the playing and pausing kind of animation looks like this there is that seek bar wavy kind of effect and you can also change the output device from right here if you want Jumping into the security in the settings of it, we do have the scramble pin layout and stuff and there is the touch fingerprint to unlock. I have also added the face unlock and fingerprints and here we have the app lock option. If you go into it, you can enable multiple apps to actually get the app lock functioning with these particular apps that you enable. Now let me show you the locking and unlocking speed over here. I'll just double tap in the home screen because it has this feature. Now if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, just notice it unlocks. 
So yeah, the unlocking experience overall is amazing and it is really fast and smooth the animation as you are noticing and double tap to wake and stuff is working perfectly fine without any issues. By the way, the lock screen clock looks like this and I'll show you with the like always on display and stuff. Let me just do that. But I couldn't simply find that ambient display kind of feature where it actually wakes up the screen when you pick up the device. Also the widgets, I did not actually show you that. But yeah, the battery widget, sometimes it's not working. It shows loading. But yeah, the clock widget and stuff is going to be working fine. Also the subscriber count widget that I have added is working fine. Now the always on display looks like this. Definitely it looks beautiful, no issues. And here, let me show you the face unlock. I'll just swipe up. And as you can see, the black border appears on the front camera and it unlocks. Let me show you up close with the front camera and this black border actually will help when you are using a video call or something or when you are doing a video call, it will actually help. There will be no halo effect from the camera on your screen or on your feed. Now the app lock, yes, it is actually working fine and this is how it will look if you just tap the finger with scanner. It will unlock and go into the app. So the app lock and stuff is working perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever with it. I have been opening multiple different apps and with that my FPS I am seeing right now it's at about 93 FPS but I have seen better FPS than this one. Overall the scrolling and stuff in Twitter as well has been amazing. Let me actually show you here. So yeah, overall the experience of this ROM is much much better. Yes, I have tried the Cherry OS earlier and I have said that that is one of the best ROMs for the Redmi Note 10 Pro but there as well I have faced couple of like quick setting panel issues like the lag and stuff from the quick setting panel here I did not face any issues like that and by the way I have flashed this ROM with the MIUI 14 Indian firmware and with that it has worked perfectly fine and after that I did not face any issues of lagging or something like that there is no lags or stutters but once I have noticed the screen wake up issue like I tapped the fingerprint scanner it was not waking up it was in deep sleep kind of and after that, like after I would say about 15 seconds, it actually woke up with the Fingbit scanner and later on it did not give me that problem. I did not even reboot, but I did face that problem once for a usage of about like three to four days or more than that. So except for that deep sleep issue, I did not face anything else. All the apps, all the like things here is amazingly smooth. No issues whatsoever that I have been facing. So I can definitely say right now, According to me and till date of the May 3rd 2023 when I'm shooting this video I would say this project Elix ROM is one of the best ROMs that I have tried it has the charging cycles it has the amazing customization features and stuff but yeah it doesn't have tiny little things like the vaulty icons and stuff does not appear but except for that this is one beautiful looking ROM in every way that I can say and if you are wondering about the benchmarks, here are the n 2 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the overall UI's performance. So let me know in the comments guys if you like the experience of using the Project Elixir ROM and the features of it. And I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the best experiences that I've ever had on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And that's how I feel about the Project Elixir ROM version 3.7. And I'm gonna keep using this ROM until I find a better option than this one or maybe worse, I don't know because I try multiple custom ROMs, but yeah, you get the point. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest Project Elixir ROM on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and how it's working. And again, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Dick signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.